Transport is said to have hit the roof when he heard about it. Joining me is the panel. Graeme Richardson still making his way to the chair, former Labor Minister and now Sky News host, and Liberal Senator James Patterson. James, why do you think people in charge of this government scheme picked as one of their very first targets Tony Abbott? Is that, do you think, to embarrass you guys? I'm very disturbed, Andrew, by the way in which the Attorney General's Department has chosen to apply this law. I don't think they're reflecting the intention of the Parliament in passing this law. This is actually very important legislation to safeguard Australian sovereignty, but the way in which the Attorney General's Department is applying it is making a mockery of the intention of the Parliament. Yeah, but it takes, an, it takes a particular mind to say Tony Abbott. Well, worse than that, I think it's bad that they've gone after Tony Abbott, but uh, this is the most disturbing thing about this instance, Andrew. They've sent 500 letters generally out to the community saying you might be required to register under this scheme, you should seek some advice about that. They've sent one letter under section 45 subsection 2 of the legislation, which has incredibly draconian enforcement powers, we can to one you. person, and it was sent to Andrew Cooper. Now, Andrew is the libertarian organiser of the CPAC conference. I don't think the There's an agenda here, mate. Well, this there is, and is, is the an point, agenda. I don't think the intention of the parliament was to go after libertarians organising talk fests in Sydney. I think the intention of the parliament was, for example, to go after organisations on university campuses that we know are funded by the propaganda arm of an authoritarian foreign government, and yet the Attorney General's Department is using their draconian powers against some libertarian from Queensland. There's an agenda here. Well, I, I, I think it doesn't look good at all for the Attorney General's Department, and I share Christian Porter's anger and frustration about why... About that, like this Graham story. Richardson joins us now. Graham, I want to pick up on something that uh, that James has just said, because I'm not happy with this, this, this so-called anger and this answer from the Attorney General at all, because... James has said, oh, the intention was that the law would be used against, say, China. Yet, the department uses against Tony Abbott, which suggests to me that the law is wrong, that the law is badly drafted. But the Attorney General says he's not going to change his laws. He's just made it clear to his department that I expected to demonstrate a focus on the more, most serious instances of non-compliance. Well, how bad is a law that it can sweep up Tony Abbott and that if a different Attorney General was there, that'd be perfectly fine. It, it doesn't get much worse if it can sweep up Tony Abbott as an enemy of Australia. I think if you're getting to that stage, things are pretty crook. Um, but I'd also have to say that um, it staggers me that, that Porter hasn't so far sacked half the department who were responsible Correct. for it. Whoever was involved there, head would have gone if I was there immediately. Because I don't care how high up they are, anyone who could do that has an agenda. You're not supposed to have an agenda when you're in the Attorney General's Department, for God's sake. What you're supposed to be is a, a, a patriot who's looking to look after your country, not who wants to pick and choose who among its citizens it approves of and those it doesn't. Is Graham Richardson right? Sack someone who made that call. It's an abominably bad call and I think actually may be wrong at law. What the law is intended to do is capture people... You're acting, just underlining it. Sack them. Yeah, acting... As if you're in the Attorney-General, you're making this bad call and you say, maybe even against the law, yeah. the Attorney-General is supposed to be on top of the law, sack the person involved. Well, I, and that may well be necessary, Andrew. Uh, the key provision of the law is to target people who are acting on behalf of foreign principles. Now, Tony Abbott has been targeted for two things. Delivering a speech at the CPAC conference in Sydney and delivering another speech in Hungary at a think tank. How is a former Prime Minister delivering a speech, which he's mostly spoke about matters pertaining to Australian politics and his experience as Prime Minister, acting on behalf of a foreign principle? I don't think there's it's, any evidence to sustain that. It's just kind. absolutely ludicrous. But I have to say, if you guys don't think that law needs redrafting, can you imagine what a Christina Keneally as Attorney General would do with that? She wouldn't be telling the department, hey, hands off Tony Abbott. My God, you guys have got to change these laws. I can't um, imagine last... Christina Keneally as Attorney General, frankly. Let's, <laughs> let's, I'm going to take this one step Graham. at a time. One Thank step you. at a time. There were only two seats stopping her from being uh, the Home Affairs Minister, Graham, and that's even more serious. Um, the ABC's, Graham, the ABC's Q&A show last night, four speakers on its panel defending or even calling for political violence, just to remind viewers, is a couple of them. As a woman, I'm asking, how many rapists must we kill until men stop raping us? Australia is going to be when people are going to start burning stuff. Um, I look forward to it. I think violence 
yeah, I think violence is OK. Graham, surely action must be taken against the ABC. You cannot have four panellists on the ABC, none of them contradicted, calling for or defending political violence. Well, imagine if on your show or my show we did that. Oh, um, we, oh. we, we, we'd be hung, drawn and quartered by midnight. Um, I find this appalling. This isn't just bad. This is extraordinary. And I, 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 I wonder what the ABC thinks sometimes. I also wonder who watches the ABC. Who actually stands there and says, right, your head goes off because this is simply not acceptable. And the answer is basically no one. They run themselves. They ha and, uh, and how much do they get in the budget now? God knows, is that more than a billion dollars? And, and we have virtually no say over that billion dollars. It scares me that something like that can be put to air. It scares me that they're stupid enough to do it. It scares me that they have what they would call the courage to do it. That just means there's a degree of madness being allowed, a degree of madness even being fostered at the ABC, and that's not their charter. I, I agree with you, Graham. I find it absolutely staggering. You're absolutely correct. If we had people on the, our shows recommending political violence, we would be off the air. Mm. We would be off the air. We've had someone who simply uh, talked to a, uh, someone who was a neo-Nazi. Someone at the ABC, by the way, had freely interviewed twice without sanction, and that caused a hell of a ruckus. The ABC, he didn't even recommend political violence. The ABC has four people on and nothing, nothing, birds tweeting, quite OK. What do you think, uh, James? And I think it's important to distinguish the usual complaints you and I have about ABC and Q&A left-wing bias from what happened last night. I think a new line was crossed, a new low was reached. Uh, advocacy and justification of political violence should have no place on a taxpayer-funded broadcaster. And I think it's about time Ida Buttrose, as chair of the ABC, stepped in and reined this program in. Those guests should not have been invited. And if they were invited and appeared and said those things, the host needed to do much more to respond to and correct those claims. All that Fran Kelly did was hold up the uh, right-wing bogeyman of Spectator Australia saying oh. that they might not approve of what was said as, a, as if it was some kind of joke. This is actually a very serious matter. You shouldn't be able to go on a tax, taxpayer-funded broadcaster and, and advocate violence against people you disagree with. I thought uh, Fran Kelly, the host, showed moral weakness here in that she clearly heard stuff that was unacceptable and she just went along with the crowd. And that, to me, was a collectivist sort of mindset. I don't know whether it's, you know, don't want to get to uh, talk about differences in the sexes, whether uh, she felt she couldn't contradict fellow women because they're all feminists together. But I thought it was a grave, grave, grave failing in her hosting duties to simply go along with that, this insightful nonsense about violence and not stand in and correct it. Yep. Well, I mean, imagine if someone from a different group had been on the panel and made similar arguments. Imagine if it had been a men's rights activist who said we should have political you violence should have to any achieve doubt our there? aims. Or indeed a, a, an Islamist or a, anyone else who made those sorts of claims. They would very rightly be put in their place, place very firmly, uh, and in, but in this instance they were not. Graham, how do you explain the lack of political courage in dealing with the ABC though? I think um, uh, we have a, a real problem here because uh, governments are frightened of the ABC. They're frightened of the friends of the ABC because these are activists who are... Uh, they're not extreme activists, but they're extremely active, if you, if you get my drift. Any mm. hint uh, that the ABC might be hauled over the coals for anything is met with hysteria every single time. And it's as if the, that there's some doctrine of infallibility that hangs over the ABC and you're just not allowed to challenge it. And yet, I, 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 uh, look, I've always liked Fran Kelly, but that's an appalling performance. It isn't just bad. It's way beyond bad. And, uh, and if you or I did it, we'd... And bad. If you and I did it, mate, we'd be in all sorts of strife. Uh, look, I, again, you, don't, you hardly need to say that. I mean, it's just inconceivable that we would be on air the next day if we had done this. But there will be, I would guarantee, no consequences. I think it's disgraceful. And uh, I don't know what the Minister for Communications, Paul Fletcher, is there for, if it's not to insist that our taxes do not 
get hijacked by the ABC to fund calls for violence against this society. This is just disgraceful. Do your job. Do your job, Minister. Uh, Graham, there was a party for your 70th birthday on the weekend. Now, <laughs> in many ways, this is significant, and it touches on sort of things, some of the themes here tonight. People from everywhere turned up. I mean everywhere. The Prime Minister, Treasurer, among many others from the Liberal side, uh, Opposition Leader Anthony Albanese, Richard Miles, Bob Carr, and others from the Labor side. What do you make of that? Well, um, I've got a lot of mates. Um, uh, I think everybody knows Scott Morrison and I have been mates for a very long time. I have nothing but admiration for, uh, uh, for the Treasurer, who's a terrific bloke, by the way. Um, and, and it was just great to, great to have them there. But, you know, it, my, I've lived an entire life, uh, of, you say, a Labor life. And so I had all my mates from Labor along. But as you, as you get older, you, you, I think you, you start to meet others, you start to realise that maybe somebody who isn't necessarily part of your team might be OK, might be a good, good Australian, might be someone who wants the same things you want, who just wants to get there a different way. And I, uh, I've got many friends in the Liberal Party and I'm proud of that, uh, just as I'm proud of my heritage. Graham, I was so pleased that you were honoured like that. Um, one, because of your career. Uh, two, because of what you represent. This ability to talk across divides. And that is becoming James Patterson. That is, seems to be becoming almost impossible now. You know, the, the, the lines are so rigid that people, you know, the sort of party that we saw for Graham, well, you know, how many of them are we going to see? That's right, Andrew. It's the feel-good story of the week. Happy birthday, Richo. Um, Thank but you. to your more substantive point, Andrew, um, I agree. that it's something you've talked about for years, which is the tribalisation of our society, that people are um, more and more identifying in camps and seeing it as a betrayal of the camp that they're in to associate with someone from another camp. And ultimately, I think that's really corrosive to a pluralistic society. I agree completely. And uh, happy birthday from me too, Graeme Richardson. Graeme Richardson, James Patterson, thank you both so much for your time. Thank you.